I'm assuming probably the throat. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he almost knocked himself out. So I've talked to you guys about the dojo. These are the two guys behind the dojo. Jason, Rami, former MMA fighters. Today, I'm gonna bring them in, not just to talk about the dojo, but also look at some of the fights from King of Dragon that we haven't looked at yet. Eric is the shorter guy, and Super Tony's the taller guy. So Super Tony has a reach advantage, as you can see. Um, I think Eric is the coach. He's the Muay Thai coach. So he ooh, um, he might have more experience than a taller guy. So it's length versus experience. So um, Rami, of course, um, former MMA fighter. And Jason's a former MMA fighter too. So they are they got way more skill than I do. So um, if I say anything wrong, just please correct me. Um, the, the, tall, the length looks... He doesn't look that inexperienced. Yeah. He looks pretty comfortable and he moves pretty well. Yeah. I mean, um, we saw him beat Angry Teddy. And so he, you know, he beat Angry Teddy in a pretty skilled Muay Thai way. Um, it looks like they're basically push kicking each other, right? They're kind of doing the Muay Thai test each other out. I guess not anymore. Oh, there's 10 seconds of ground time, which they decided not to take advantage of. Does he have Sanda training? Is that what it is? I or? do not think so. Both of them are pure Muay Thai. It's just because it's um it's smaller MMA gloves. So when I lived in Taiwan, Muay Thai wasn't very big. Mm. So I'm wondering like if this is like there. I mean, definitely the taller guy looks like a, he fights with this a nice Muay Thai style. Mm -hmm. The other guy's definitely like nice punches. So. Yeah, the the other guy I guess is trying to beat the tall guy with his aggression, huh? Hmm. For those of you that remember the previous fight when Eric fought, A.K. Ronan fought Sila, the Wing Chun guy, Eric was downloading the first round. He wasn't fast or explosive, so he actually got knocked down pretty hard the first round. So I think he's learning from the mistake now. So he's much Why more did he stop it there. Uh, he might have gotten kicked in the did, cup. Was that an illegal technique? Did like the the knee on the ground? Like I, I think. Yeah. Like the, oh, uh, I yeah. see. So it's normal MMA rules for those 10 seconds? Yes, it looks like it. So in, Rami, in standard MMA, you're not allowed to knee a downed opponent, right? Correct, yeah. Unless it's 1FC or Pride, but yeah. this is kind of more, you know, Western MMA rules, it looks like. So the, the hybrid part of it is that it's only 10 seconds on the ground. So I think that's just to prevent stalling and also give strikers a chance because strikers might not want to enter this if they're like, oh my God, Eventually. some guy might just put me on the ground for two minutes. So the strikers might spend two or three months doing jiu-jitsu or something, and they could be ready for something like this. It keeps the pace fast. Yeah, it keeps, keeps the, the pace fast. Going. Yeah. Uh... So, Rami, in your MMA career, how many fights did go to the ground? And I fought four times. They all went. They all went to the ground. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, point taken. But, I mean, it was a different era back different then. Different era. So. so. I see. So. Ooh, oh, 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 oh that, nice that was a good knockback. Ooh, oh, nice. man. So, looks like fighting the clinch, which is a good thing to do in Muay Thai, I guess, when you're getting pressured, right? Clinch them. Right. Especially if you're taller. Mm, makes sense. Oh. Oof. The, the, the smaller guy's got better hands, and he's doing a good job of closing the distance. I see. Oh, nice punch. Yeah. Remy, when you did a uh, MMA, did you mostly train for striking or mostly grappling, anti-grappling, or was it kind of a mixture of all everything? Honestly, I just trained jiu-jitsu. Just trained jiu-jitsu. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Very different than it is now. I no, no gi jiu-jitsu though. No gi jiu-jitsu. No, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. Um, I I think I covered this already. There was a submission actually in in this in ten seconds, uh -huh. so it is possible. Uh, is there any rules for like the standing tie-ups? Do they break up? I think as long as there, there's action within the standing tie-ups, they won't break it up. But if they're they're just like stalling, then the ref will break them up. So theoretically, you could submit people from on the yeah, feet. Yeah, on the feet, yeah. yeah. Especially in the early days of the UFC, that stuff happened all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. just unfamiliar yeah. positions yeah. to some people there. Yeah. Honestly, they both are, they both look good on their feet. Mm-hmm, yeah. Ooh! Ooh. Oh. Wow. I just ate it. When you two were fighters, did you coach also? Uh... Yes, mm -hmm. I did. You coach jiu-jitsu because you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu. What about you? Did you coach I MMA? don't particularly enjoy coaching. Okay. So, so you I were was, mostly just fighting. I was like 20 at the time, so mm -hmm. I wasn't in the mind frame of 
coaching. So Makes sense. Maybe that will change now. Makes sense. Check out the dojo. You'll see Jason on there. Are you on the dojo yet? Not yet. Well, Not you're going to be on the dojo. He's going to be on my channel on the dojo. So. <laughs> He's going to teach us how to play poker. On That's, the right. Yeah. That's right. He's a professional poker player now, by the way. So, you wonder what happens to fighters after they retire? They find poker. Here's some <laughs> examples. Yeah. So, okay, let's watch the next round. This is the third place fight, by the way. So, both of them, I think, were beaten by other people. So, they're fighting for the third place. So, ooh, that was a good combo. No, um, that was like the little boom, two kick combo that Eric did. Eric's the shorter guy. Um, also, say, oh shit. Do you know what weight this is? Um, I forgot. We can check that um, later. He can't stay in his guy's range. Yeah, you know, exactly. He's got to get inside. Ooh, second time it's happened. Nice. I guess they have a gentleman's agreement to not do anything on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Is that an elbow pad they're wearing? Yeah, so elbow pads. Are they allowed to elbow each yes. other? Um, from this first season, there weren't that many elbows. I think I counted maybe four to six total. And, you know, some of it could just be... Um, it's for longevity. Were there yeah. any, uh, in this tournament, were there any grapplers? Yes, there was one guy who, um, spoiler, is going to take place in the first place, place fight. So, Do you having know grappling what his experience. Name is? Yeah, Katsuwaki. He's a half Japanese, half Taiwanese guy. He lives in Japan? Yeah. I mean, he lives in Taiwan? Or he Japan? lives in Japan. But he, he's, um, he, he's a Taiwanese citizen or whatever, so he came back to fight in this. And I've been trying to interview him, and he blows me off. <laughs> so, Jason, in your MMA matches, they mostly ended up with submissions too, right? I fought four amateur and four professional, wow. and they all win submissions. Wow, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So, when you two are looking at these two Muay Thai guys fight, are you immediately think about entries to grapple them? Or do you think striking, or is it kind of both? I mean, I, I, I'm just, yeah, I notice the striking. I mean, mm -hmm. they both look very comfortable and very it, it looks like neither one of them and and, and I, mean, I lived in taiwan 10 years ago so mm -hmm. things have changed a lot but like the, the level of grappling was very low mm. there was only a couple grap like decent grappling schools uh in the entire on the entire island mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it looks like these guys are definitely i mean strikers yeah you know so, yeah um Oh, another takedown. Eric's accomplished yeah. that move three times. I wonder if these guys went and they look, they look like they like lived in Thailand and trained in Thailand. Yeah, um, Eric has a Thai coach. And um, so the shorter guys um, fought in Thailand too. And I, yeah. apparently he even beat some Thais when he went to Thailand to fight. He's got so, good hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about the taller guy, but... One thing that's funny about the Taiwanese culture is that they're tough people, but when they talk, they sound like the like really kawaii little like oh. men you would mess with. But it's like you don't know what's behind their like cutesy nice voices. Nice body yeah. kick. Yeah, that was he great. that one by Tony to the rib. Ooh, yeah. and so Eric responds. That was the end of the second round, I think. In between rounds, what do your corners tell you? <laughs> I can I can answer that question. Mm -hmm. One of my last fights, Rami was in my corner, oh. and uh, I was really tired. I got on top. On a, on a mount, and I, I went for like a arm lock, uh -huh. and I, I the guy got back up on top of me, mm -hmm. and in between rounds, Ron was like looked like looked me in the eyes, and like I was tired, he's like you, <laughs> you stay on the top, <laughs> you go don't go for that arm bar, you know, like dude, you know, like, <laughs> like he was just he just like b brought me back into it, you know. I see, I see. So that that's a very important corner thing to do. It's to like get them on track like again. When you're on top, stay on top. Don't mm -hmm. go for that. You know? I see. I see. Well, because the guy was never going to get out if Jason didn't take a chance to go for the arm bar. So I see. And as far as I'm concerned, in an MMA match, it's better to take less risks. Yeah, exactly. Keep on dominating. If you yeah. Can. And you win by points just by dominating, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he can finish from top, too. Mm, makes sense. Without taking the risk. Yeah, just yeah. stay on top and punch him. Mm. Beat this. Like... A lot of times the guy will just give you the submission if you if you punch him enough times. He's just like, okay, get off, get off. And mm -hmm. then yeah, give they don't want to tap because that looks like it's quitting, but mm -hmm. they tap in a different way by giving you something that's that's you wouldn't normally get. Right. I see, I see. That's interesting. Wow, they're going at it, man. Yeah, yeah they're biting down. Wow. Ooh, that was an elbow. That answered our question about elbows. 
I wonder if this is like a law in Taiwan, like they have to wear elbow pads, because I, I don't know why they're wearing elbow I've never seen that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, I there's no head guard, they, they right, but there is elbow pads. Yeah, yeah. and, they, and they never, they're not wearing anything on the cover of their knees or their shins or their feet, so mm-hmm. I'm surprised that they care if they're wearing, I guess they just don't want to get cuts, that's probably what it is, just avoiding cuts. Yeah. Someone, I don't know what that was, we'll have to look back later, but he was, someone got a warning or something. Ooh, Eric is... Eric is the shorter guy. Eric is going in. Ooh, and he did another yes. one. So how, how did the judges score like throws compared to other things? That I honestly don't know. Um, Dude, I'm assuming this, um, same throw on him like three times yeah. in a row. I'm assuming probably the throws. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he almost knocked himself out. Do you see that? He almost knocked himself oh, out. Oh my goodness. Um, and that guy missed it out. He should have jumped on it. Yeah, him. jumped on him, know. especially with 10 seconds of ground time. Yeah. Just, he just has no idea what to do on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dude. another one. Wow. This is, yeah. Eric. That's like a George Bush thing. George Bush thing. Fool, <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Uh, whatever the hell. Fool me, kick you, fool the kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once. Shame on. Shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. <laughs> he's hit it, like literally he's done it to him four times now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. Learn. So Eric fights a lot like a Thai, Thai um, fighter, he definitely. Uh, Super Tony, the taller guy, I think, um, almost looks like he's got some kind of hybrid style. But, he's ooh, tired. He's too. tired, yeah, he's telegraphing that lead yeah. hook. Bad. Ooh, nice. He's just, oh my not god. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, um, that actually I should ask Victor that question. Like, how much are throws scored? Because in this one, Eric completely dominated with his throws. He has no. The tall guy has no snap on yeah, his punch. There's no. And you know the the previous match he won um, with with his clinches. Yeah. And then before after that he fought the MMA guy who beat him with submissions. So. So it's, Eric. It, um, uh, Eric. It's Super Tony. So Super Tony fought Katsuaki before he fought Eric. Uh, and the, the, um, technically, Super Tony lost twice in that match against the MMA guy. Because but? the first time, he, he pretended he didn't tap, but he was actually getting choked out. And the oh, second wow. time, I think, got armbarred. But then he made it to the second round? Or yeah, what? He, he made it to the loser bracket of oh, this. Oh, that's what yeah, this is? Yeah, because uh, he won his first match and then lost his second match. I see. So, yeah. So who beat uh, who beat Eric? It's the other guy, another Muay Thai guy that um, Katsuaki's gonna fight in the finals. So did that go to knockout or did that go to the decision? Or I what? think that went to decision. I believe Eric got kicked twice in the balls accidentally in that match. So <laughs> sometimes, man, you can't you can't avoid. Did you guys ever get hit in the groin? Honestly, no. Oh, not that's cool. not not the, one. the worst yeah. is the hit in the liver. The that's hits the, the liver that really made me uh they put me down wow not in a not in a competition but just in training in you know? training yeah. yeah for me it's getting punched in the eye it completely makes me flinch oh it's the worst thing. yeah i've actually never been hit in the liver and had that feeling Dude, before so it's knock on wood you yeah. ever had the wind knocked out of you i don't think so oh so that's yeah, worse than that one time someone threw a baseball straight at my stomach when I was a little kid. Uh-huh. So maybe that was like getting... And, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's getting... Yeah. So like getting hit in the liver is worse. Yeah. Okay, I see. It's like that, but like even worse. Yeah. I see. So they gave it to Eric. Now one was a 29. So one judge gave him two rounds. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it was a deserved victory by Eric. You guys can watch the rest of this. There's a lot of interviews, a lot of entrances. But let's answer Rami's question about what the weight class is. It looks like 69 kilograms... Um, 69 kilograms, so 69 times 2.2. It's like 155. 155? Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 155, around. yeah, around 155. He's also older, he's got big height, and he's got big reach advantage, but he was more skilled. Yeah, more power, faster. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And he controlled the range better. That's right. So th- these rules, now that, you, now that I understand, yeah, it, it doesn't, there's no reason to even practice grappling. Maybe a few defenses. 
but I would just, I would just yeah. try to, yeah. And it shouldn't take much to be able to last 10 seconds. Exactly. It shouldn't, shouldn't make, take much training Dude, to, like, yes. other than a week. Yeah. Especially chokes, right? Because chokes, I, mean, I can let you choke me for 10 seconds and I might not pass out. Yeah. I would just do, like, leg locks or something like that. Yeah. Like, quick, fast leg locks. If I, if I was going to study submissions, just, like, take the guy down and quickly and go for flying it. Flying arm bars? Like, flying, yeah, something. something. Like yeah. I believe he got tapped did he get choked? Yeah, the first time he got choked, and he he, said he what that. his claim was, he was he counted ten seconds, and he's like, "Okay, let me go." It's ten seconds, but it looked uh, like he tapped. So, but I think that was a genuine enough excuse. Uh-huh. The second time he got armbarred, I'm pretty sure I might have been mistaken. I think it was an armbar. So literally, he's never trained a day in his life. Yeah, was, yeah. Super Tony probably hasn't done much jujitsu. It should be hard to tap anyone in ten seconds yeah. if they have any grappling experience. Exactly. All. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay to see. Like, why even have it then? Like, what's the point? Um, I think just because part of the fun in this is that when it goes to the ground, it doesn't get stood up immediately. It's like, okay, like, remember you even mentioned there was a point where he almost knocked himself out where Super Tony could have, like, followed up with a punch and yes. he would have won, right? right That's right. an example of where they could have taken advantage of that 10-second uh-huh, rule. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it opens up certain things for a match that you don't get if it were straight-up kickboxing or straight-up Muay Thai. Got it. Got yeah. it. Rami... When you were fighting, were the majority of your opponents grapplers or strikers? Were they both kind of varieties? Uh, they were actually grapplers. Grapplers. Yeah. Okay, so you fought mostly grapplers. What about you when you were fighting? <laughs> An amateur, I, like one night I went to this event and I fought three guys in one night in Texas. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like... <laughs> this is funny. The, I, I was living in, the, in Hawaii at the time and I went out to corner for a friend of mine mm-hmm. who was fighting in Texas. And uh, the... The promoter had announced like a ten thousand dollar first like cash prize for the, for the night, and he put it on the local radio. So all these guys came out of the woodwork, and but he had he he didn't get any spectators. He had like like I'm not exaggerating. There's probably like fifty spectators, mm-hmm. and he didn't have any money to pay the the purse. He was freaking out, and he's like, "Man, will you will you fight tonight, please? Because I I don't uh, I can't I can't I can't pay out the winner." Wow. Well, and then and my friend was like, "Dude, I'm." I'm not gonna fight in this. He's like, he's like, I'm 170 pounds, and the guys were coming there at 300, like big Texas guys, you know. It was like my friend from Hawaii, and the promoter's like, uh, "Oh, will you fight in this?" I'm like, "Oh my god, what do I do?" I was, I almost said no, like let's just go out of here. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So the first guy I fought was like this guy, his name might have been Bubba, I don't even know, and like he had zero training. He just came at me and I choked him in like a couple seconds, and then I think his older brother was also there he was like a bigger guy and I choked him out in a couple but these he was like untrained street fighters just guys who literally they, they thought oh I'm gonna go win 10 grand tonight and but they had no fighting skill wow. so he wanted you to win so that he didn't have to pay the 10 so grand. he didn't have to pay so the it's like what did you get out of this he didn't he a just his friendship <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, even, don't even ask literally uh, he, he's like I'll take care of you at the end of the night that's what okay. he said to me and like I just like he's like please he said, will you help me? I was like, okay, I'll just wow. do it. I'm going to cross you into Juarez and you can have a party down there. What? <laughs> Dude. Is, uh... Oh, no. I forget. At the end of the night, he, uh, he, I fought him at the end of the night, the promoter. He, like, went in himself and I, <laughs> I, I went under a pseudonym. I fought under Jason Smith. I said my name was Jason Smith because I was like, I'm not going to fight in this podunk thing. And anyway... Uh, I I threw like I I threw the fight to him. I, I like let a leg lock me or something. Yeah, I I was just a, ridiculous. I I don't even. I just wanted to get out of there and I wanted to get home and I just did what I could to get there because it was it was just a jerry rigged organ. I, I should have just said no. I should have just left. Is what looking back, but. I don't even know. Good thing you didn't get hurt, man. Yeah. I'm really happy for you because you were fighting big guys, so you managed to use grappling on them. Well, okay, if you're a high level grappler and the other person doesn't know any grappling at all, it, it's like fighting a child. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like I mean, of course you risk getting hurt, but once you once you get the fight on the ground, you shouldn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. Of course, if a good big guy hits you, then you're in trouble. But yeah. as long as you're prepared for that and you make the clinch and you get him down, you should be able to avoid getting hurt you know I what see. I mean? and also avoid hurting them i didn't i didn't hit throw a punch wow just, you know what i mean yeah but i'm literally these guys were like zero fighting skill it wasn't like they were training for a few months even it was just like yeah just try to, super telegraph super stiff yeah they just yeah. run at you yeah. try to hit you once and you just clinch and take them down it wow the, yeah it was just that was it wow that was fun though really fun actually
You see why I like these guys, people? <laughs> Rami and Jason. If you want more stories like this, if you want extended versions, by the way, if you want the full version with all the swear words not blurred out, go on the dojo, guys. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, dojo don't worry. Community. You don't have to apologize when it's on the dojo because yes. the swearing will be in there. So if you want, if you didn't like the, the silencing of the swearing, go on the dojo. Watch it. Watch the full version uncut. So they will be back, guys. Thank you.